clean my glasses. Oh, good evening. Sun's just setting. You can see it heading in the trees back there behind me. I'll give a minute or so here for a couple people to get on. Get this set up here. You can see Kelly's garden's growing like crazy. Hello, Gearhead, Andrew, Derek, Ryan, Wesley. Um, yeah, we just finished up that bus today. Well, actually, I thought I was done with it yesterday. Um, yeah, I don't know if you watched the video or not, but it was just a crazy day today. Uh, but it was fun. Got it all worked out. Uh, last time I checked with him, he was about two hours from home. The bus was doing great. Tons of power. Um, a little bit of black smoke, but uh, that's because we did a non-book tune on it. Um, some stuff that Joe taught me to do to it, get a little extra power out of it. Um, but that was fun. It was a fun bus. The, the air brake situation today was just crazy. Um, it's a good thing that it happened here and not on the road for him. So he was able to, you know, get that sorted out. Um, something that air brake uh, relay valve going bad. That was just pure luck that that happened here. Um, and that we were able to find the part and get them, get them going with that. And then that stupid uh, valve that was leaking causing air. We don't know where that, what that originally went to or even why it's hooked up like that. Um, but it went through a bulkhead and then up, up under the floor somewhere it was apparently either disconnected or cut or it just, we couldn't, we couldn't get to it, but we could hear it. So it was that quarter inch line just shooting out full air pressure whenever the brake light was on. Um, just real bizarre. I, I thought when I heard him come in that I heard an air leak, but the very second that he shut the bus down, it stopped. And then I'm like, hey, step on the pedal, and hold it down, no air leak, put your parking brake on, no air leak. I'm like, huh, just heard an air leak. That was really weird. Um, but I just thought it was like an echo down there or something or a noise the engine was making or you know maybe a fan or something that was that sound. Uh, with that Detroit Diesel 8V71 running, you really can't hear a little air leak very good. I mean, all the work that we did on the brakes, we did everything with the engine off. You know, we just aired it up or, uh, and then uh, did that. So, yeah, that was an interesting, interesting problem. Uh, I have another MCI bus coming to the property tomorrow. So you'll see some more bus videos uh, either tomorrow night or the next day. So, um, hey, David, yeah, you're welcome for the help on that part. Um, I could probably tell your story because, well, your, your part, man, my hands are dirty. It's been a while since I've had the dirty fingernails. Um, David, the, the relay valve that went bad on his is the same thing that we that we had today with the, where the spring went bad on the inside of it. Um, but he, he had a really great story. Or maybe I shouldn't tell it. Can I tell the story, David, <laughs> about your, uh, about your, um, wrench <laughs> ability um where the where the uh with the airbag issue okay um so D when david was new and he didn't know anything he has a 4104 so it's airbag suspension and uh he had a little bit of a leak in an airbag so he crawled up under the bus and bus 101 when you go under a bus that has airbags on it you always put blocking under it um, very, very important, very, very dangerous. It, it, otherwise, it can come down about four inches, and you usually don't have four inches of clearance of yourself under there. But he kind of finagled himself up around the drive, or around between the uh, axle and the bulkhead. There's a little bit of room up in there. Um, and he kind of was sitting up in there, and he went to, I don't know if he's going to tighten the airline or something, and the very second that he touched it, the airline flew off of the airbag, and then immediately deflated the air system. But he didn't get squished because he was in that little area where there was room. So the bus just came down and he's at a campground on a Friday where there's nobody else there. Nobody's gonna be back in until Monday. Uh, he's by himself. And uh, which you probably shouldn't go under a bus all by yourself either. But uh, yeah, so now he's alive. The bus has come down, it's not running. Um, no way to air it up and he's stuck. He's got, you know, it's, it's basically his legs went out to the side and it's, it's, it's on him, no, no room whatsoever. Yeah, no, no way to start it, no way to air it up, nothing. And uh, 
but he, the only tool that he has is a crescent wrench. So over the next six hours, he digs a tunnel with a crescent wrench to get out from underneath of the bus. I think that's a, a crazy story. Um, to, you know, nobody to call for help. Nobody can hear you. He was yelling, but there was nobody around. Um, just to realize that you almost got killed, but you're still alive. And now what do I do to get out of here? Um, that's just crazy. And using a crescent wrench as a tunneling, I, I feel, feel it's like digging yourself out of prison kind of thing. So never go underneath of a bus with airbags without throwing some blocks underneath of it. So, um, yeah, that, that I saw somebody just commented on that. Oh, six and a half hours. Sorry. Um, <laughs> when I say six hours or when I say eight hours, whatever it was, it was a long time. It would have seemed like twice as long. Um, yeah, was that motorhome that they're turning into a trailer? Was that crazy? Did you? <laughs> when I saw that in the shop, I was like, "What the shit?" <laughs> oh man, yeah, that was just uh, it was insane to see somebody doing that. I guess, I guess he got that. The guy got the trailer for the motorhome for free. Uh, somebody else had a issue where they needed the motor out of it, and instead of taking the motor out right. Um, they just like cut it out, like with a torch, just cut everything around it. So there was really no way to just put a motor back in it, but the rest of that motor home was completely fine. Uh, everything works inside. So they were just gonna make a camping type trailer out of it. And that welding shop was was welding the frame for it and stuff. Um, so that was neat. That was da David who did that with the airbags. He's been commenting out here. Um, so you can go back and read the comments. Uh, Elizer, I think is his name. Yeah, I think it guys, yeah, that, that was one of the questions uh, about how heavy that trailer was going to be. <laughs> He's like, what the hell is he going to pull it with? Um, but I thought it was cool. They, they were doing a good job. The welding shop was doing a good job fabbing everything up for it and turning it into a trailer. Yeah, that was amazing that we found that part at that shop. And he doesn't even sell parts like that. I just, uh, we, we went there to look for a spring and then uh, we... You showed him what we had and the guy's like yeah i don't have anything like that and mark was like you know what let me just go look around on your shelves maybe you got something you don't know and he picked up you know a little gizmo that was a latch that had a spring in it he's like that's almost the right size that's very close let's keep looking um and then he's going down another row of stuff there we're just talking to him you know he's had his machine shop for you know 40 some years or his, his welding shop there um and there's some truck parts there that are you know uh, trailer related and things like that. And, and then in an, in an old box was that, was that, uh, relay valve that we needed. And he's like, we don't just need a spring. Actually, we need the whole valve. Here it is. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, he, he reported in his bus was doing great. Tons of power, um, driving great, uh, air pressure staying right at 120 the whole time, never coming down. Uh, brakes are super strong parking brake set and release when he needed it to, when he stopped to get some food and stuff. Uh, no big oil leaks or anything. So he said, it, he said it was doing great. Huh. What am I doing on the MCI that's coming tomorrow? Just kind of general stuff. I think we're a lot of the same stuff. Uh, I think we're, I know I'm servicing generator and stuff like that too, but uh, just kind of inspection on it too. And I think he's had some issues with his brakes. Uh, I believe I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that he told me a story that he had it at another bus shop and something happened with the parking brake and it rolled away and hit a couple of Prevos, like newer, like nice Prevos. Um, and I don't think they wanted it back because of that. So I, I could be wrong. That might, might, might not be the same guy. I could be wrong, but um, that, that did happen to somebody that I talked to who's bringing their bus here. Um, and yeah, the DD3 brakes, I guess they're not super common in a lot of places now anymore. Um, but they're not that hard. So we'll, we'll get in there and figure out what's going on. Um, to me, it just seems more like an adjustment thing or something bad in one of the brake cans or something. But uh, So we'll get it up down there on the pad and uh, figure out what needs to get done with it. But it, I, think, I, think, I think he's had several, he's on several buses over. I think he's a musician. He's on several buses, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Oh man. 
man. Uh, I'm going to have a hard time keeping up with comments here because I'm all by myself right now. So, yeah, I got some travels coming up. We're going to stick closer to home um, to begin with here. Um, I know I got some stuff like in uh, Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, things like that. Like, so we're, we don't really, really, really want to go more than like 250 miles right now if we don't have to. Uh, and then the thing with Bruce, I'm just waiting to hear back from him about when we're going to head down uh, to Florida to do that. But I don't want to do that until he's got air conditioning in the shop for sure. So I don't know if he's done that yet. I know that I think like the 1st of July is when I'm going to be going uh, up to... Uh, Indiana to work on a silver sides too. I, I've been talking with the owner about that. So just just far enough away where it's, you know, just a one day trip and uh, as far as travel, but I'll be there for several days. Um, it's a bus that's not been on the road. Uh, he just recently bought it, but had it towed back to his location. So uh, lots of systems to go through and get it get it ready to go. Um, kind of in a similar condition to Tyler's bus, I think, so about that, like that. Do you want to help me with questions or whatever, Kelly? Sure, let me go back and see. How much does Lenny weigh now with no generator? Um, that generator probably weighs about 300 pounds. Uh, so 300 pounds less than the 27,000 pounds that he was before. I don't remember what the exact number was. Uh, he's not going to be a lot lighter. Um, but I think it's going to be good to remove weight. It's probably not much difference at all because you put the mini split in. Oh, uh, but we took the rooftop airs off. Yeah, I took two rooftop airs off with the oh, mini wait, split in. Put solar panels on. He's and, probably about the same now. And I added four more solar panels. Uh, he probably weighs about the same. Yeah, that would be. Oh, I got such a headache. I probably should have not done this live. I have such a headache. Well, don't read and let me just answer. Any updates on Lenny's new paint? Uh, no. I've been lazy. I, I, every time I look at it, I'm like, it needs to get done. It's and been too hot. It's it always been hot. It's um, humid. If I take my glasses off, that might help my head. Um, yeah, it's it's been... Today was great. But, like, last week or... Was that this week? I don't even know what day it is. Last okay. weekend and into this week, uh, it was really hot and humid. Uh, heat index, index temperatures were around 100, so it was in the uh, lower 90s, but super humid. Um, I didn't want to do anything outside. Like I came outside and washed the roof of the bus one morning. I started at eight o'clock. By 9.30, I was just completely dead from the heat and, and exhausted and sweating. And, uh, and I was spraying myself off with the hose and everything too, so. When are you heading to Arkansas? I do not know. I, I, we have, there is nothing on the schedule that's firm right now, uh, other than uh, when I hear from Bruce that we'll go down and take care of that with him. And then um, the Indiana trip that I'm planning right now for that Silver Sides, that's gonna be on the calendar. Hopefully I can get a couple more people to come here this month so I don't have to go right away. Um, otherwise, yeah, maybe I can schedule something to go to like Arkansas or Alabama um or you know even tennessee or kentucky just close you know work for three or four days or something then come back that would be ideal what blog site is best to find help doing repairs to my boss um uh, well the bus grease monkey forum busgreasemonkey.com if you sign up there there's a lot of information on there manuals uh, a lot of experienced people that have owned buses for you know 40 50 years um, many of the people on their own multiple buses. So it's a good resource for, you know, parts and stuff like that too. If there's something you're looking for, there's a good chance that somebody on there has got what you need. Do you ever work on scenic cruisers? Yeah. Yeah. There's several of them in videos on the site. Are you going to put a shed or store down by the pad in case of rain? <sighs> It'd be nice. And we definitely discussed it after working down there on that bus you should see my thing right now my my volkswagen thing it's completely packed with tools right now i took i didn't want to put it away in the bus because i'm gonna have almost the same stuff back down there in a, tomorrow um 
so yeah it's it's filled with tools right now it might it probably weighs twice as much as it, as it normally does um, but yeah it'd be nice to have a storage I, I mentioned yesterday maybe I'll just get a small container to put down here and then I'll be able to you know keep some stuff down there to do that until we get the shop built but I don't really want to pay the money for a small container it's only a few hundred dollars more to get a full-size one um, I don't want to look at a container down there. she doesn't want to look at a container you know uh, we talked about putting a, a covered uh, carport type thing on there. Um, just, it'd be nice thinking about it. Hey, the dogs are barking. That shocks you? <laughs> no, it doesn't shock me. It shocked me that they weren't barking. I think that's all the questions. I'm going to go back and look, though. It's okay. You could just ask them to ask if she didn't answer or we didn't answer your question ask it again so we don't have to scroll back through it please uh somebody asked how long have you had lenny make sure they're in all caps too yeah make sure your questions I'm, I'm reading everything now. all capital letters um we we got lenny on fourth of july um i think it's been five years or six years it's gonna be six years six years will an 8v not fit in a silver side no <laughs> no 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 um just because of the way the back is, there, there's no way to fit that V configuration there. There's not as much room between the bulkhead and the bumper like you have on some of the other models. Um, it can be done on a 4104, but there's more room. And then you still got to, uh, yeah, it's, it can't. I'm not saying it can't be done, but without modifying what you got there, it's not going to be done. That belt, I don't know if you heard me on that video when I discussed it, uh, but the engine was running, so you might not have heard me, but that belt was super loose on that MCI. Um, the belt goes around the crankshaft at the bottom, and then it goes, you know, the belt, the belt of death, and it goes way up top to that squirrel cage fan at the top. Well, those fans sit on a shelf, and there's supposed to be some supports that come in at an angle that go from the ceiling and then down. That's crazy. See that? That's there. Okay. Um, anyways, the supports come down and, and hold that shelf that that upper pulley sits on. Well, his supports are missing, so it's kind of got a sag in the middle, and he's got it as tight as it'll go, and it allows it to come down and just kind of sag down in the middle. So there's no way for him to do that. So he just bought some turnbuckles, and he was going to weld up some brackets and figure out how to support that so that it would no longer sag. But this morning when it wouldn't build air, I had to shut that engine off by reaching my hand around those belts while it was running and I'm um, the whole time thinking geez those things are super loose I don't like being this close to them uh to reach to the shutdown and, and shut down the engine so that was exciting have you made your pilgrimage to Bucksnort yet <laughs> we have not been to Bucksnort no we've not been to Bucksnort I, I really want to go to Bucksnort it's kind of I mean it's 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 here in the county uh I love it have you considered a golf cart for the property oh yeah i have considered a golf cart for the property you walk the hill one time and you'll consider any mode mode of transportation for the property uh a golf cart would come in really handy we've been using the, the thing has gone up and down the hill how many times do you think yesterday 20 times you probably set me up and down at least 20 times yeah, yeah i bet i bet the thing went up and down the hill 20 times yesterday um, much better than walking up and down the hill but uh, the that. thing is basically a golf cart but an electric golf cart would be awesome just because we could charge it off the batteries not have to worry about running out of gas not have to put the wear and tear on the thing um, golf carts are expensive I, I looked on craigslist just for some which there was one that was on there an older electric one which is probably what i'd be looking for for like 500 bucks but other than that there was nothing under like 3500 dollars. i was just shocked I, I to me i thought golf carts were like 500 to a thousand bucks for like an older you know 80s model golf course style uh, electric kind of deal, but there there wasn't a whole lot out there. Have you thought about sealing the concrete pad? It has a sealer on it. We put a nice sealer on it, um, not just like a Thompson's or something like that. It was a really good, um, but I did notice something with it today. It, it, it does really pretty good against the engine oil stains. It didn't soak into the concrete. Um, but when we use brake clean on it, the brake clean like ate it up a little bit. So I gotta be really careful about that, which, you know what? I gotta not be careful about it. I just gotta not give a crap because it's gonna end up 
with some stains on it. There's just no way. I mean, we, we replaced an axle seal yesterday. By the time you pull that all apart, clean everything, you know, cleaning the, the brake drum off, cleaning the brakes. Uh, it's just, it's never going to be completely perfect down there. Um, we can I, always paint it later. We can paint it. We can put an epoxy coat on it or something. I, I just, it's going to happen and just don't worry about it. <laughs> don't lose any sleep over it. I'm not going to. When will, be, when will Kelly be cooking for a video again? Have to go to the store. Yeah, she needs to go to the store. Although we did today, oh, yesterday, I had my first food out of the garden uh, on my sandwich. We had lettuce from the garden was on my sandwich. And I had a salad today from the garden uh, of lettuce. <laughs> She's what? been making me some stuff, by the way, but she she doesn't want to just make it like the first time she's ever made it for a video. I've been experimenting. Yeah, so she'll experiment and make some changes. So like one, she's been making me like a buffalo chicken um, that's really good. And uh, she's done it twice for me. So maybe the next time she'll do it. I need it. different tofu. Yeah, she needs to get a different tofu that she's been using. And it's been hard to find uh, multiple kinds of tofu here in this area <laughs> without going Any to- Any tofu in this yeah. area. <laughs> We had to go in to... If you want real chicken, it. that's no problem. You can find real chicken at the store. Uh, this isn't California. What is your favorite Detroit engine? Inline 671 or 12E71 for the tie. <laughs> How did things go with the Buffalo overheating problems? Um... Why do I not know what they're talking about? I don't know. <laughs> um, I, maybe you're talking about John's bus that was in Missouri. That was the Buffalo that we, yeah, once we cleaned the radiator out and we replaced the water pump, the water pump was bad on it. Um, I hadn't heard back from him, but I would assume that his overheating problems are fixed. Uh, that those two major, you know, the radiator was like 30% plugged up and the water pump was not working properly. So I would assume that he's, he's fixed up. How about a GoFundMe for one of those Amish built buildings? <laughs> uh, oh man. I'll skip that question for right now. <laughs> I, I, I'd like to get back to work and be able to pay for, excuse me, and build my own building that, you know, uh, you know, people stepped up and helped me out get that concrete pad. That was awesome. Um, I, I just don't think that that's something that I need to do with that right now. I just got a super chat. Um, Peter, tiny something for whatever budget needs it. Hey man, thank you. Um, that is much appreciated, Peter. Have you heard of the English made Napier septic opposed piston two stroke? Yes. Somebody mentioned it to me on the channel before, and then I went and looked at it. And there's a couple of different versions of those. I, I think they're by different companies, but um, that's a pretty neat concept. I, I thought it was pretty cool. Okay, and then Kelly Kelly wants to know if there's a Mazda 3 that's going to be available in the Fourteen oh one, six seventy one. Okay, I don't know what that. I'm trying to go back. Yeah, um, where is it located at? And let me know. Have you been through Iowa recently? Uh, not since the f fall. Was it fall? Yeah. No, summer. Or did we come back through Iowa? We came back through, didn't we? Uh, no, it was, it was before Burning Man. Okay. Yeah, it was a trip before Burning Man. So it was, it was early summer when we were in Iowa of last year. So it's been a year. Have you driven the Natchez Trace? Yes. In the bus, too. Not, not the whole entire thing, um, but it's a beautiful road. Um, it's a lot like the scenery all around here though. So that, that's kind of what made us fall in love with Tennessee too, we, that, when we did that trip. Although when I did it, I was dying, right? That's, yeah. yeah that's when you I was, 
I thought I was dying when I the last time. I'm surprised that I have fond memories of it because of how, that's when I had my major kidney stones, but I didn't know that I had them. And uh, yeah, I just- You had to stop several times because you were sick. I, yeah, I was, oh, that was horrible. But the, the drive was beautiful and peaceful. I remember pulling off at one rest area there and just wanting to die. <laughs> Does Kelly have a daily driver in Indiana besides the thing? Yeah, she has a BMW 528i. Um, the one that I tried, filled, to set on fire? tried to set on fire with the Detroit diesel. Um, filled it with soot. <laughs> but it mostly cleaned up. Don't really need another vehicle, though. So. Yeah. Um, someone says, I don't hear the dogs tonight. Did you find a solution? No, they, they were, were barking They earlier. were just barking twice since we've been on here. They didn't do it for long though. That was nice that it wasn't a continuous. I was worried. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to find the next question. Are you still having tick problems since you sprayed? Not so much. There, I mean, we've seen some on the property here. I've not had any on me. Um, I had that the one from when the car broke down, but that wasn't here. Um, but I just instantly saw them on my leg. And then other than that, we haven't been out. But we haven't we haven't been all. traipsing through the. I, I I mowed the lawn, and didn't have any ticks on me. So what? You called it a lawn. Okay, I <laughs> mowed the grass patch over there. The the, the weeds and. Gr well, I guess there are grasses growing up in there. There is some grass over there. There's a lot of crab grass or something. There's but. a lot of stuff over there. <gasps> what is the weakest link in a six V ninety two? Uh main bearings, rod bearings. Uh O rings, liners. Is that a super chat? Right. The Chaz. Thanks good. for the daily driver answer. Oh. Thank you. You think, yeah, you're welcome, but thank you. <laughs> when were the turbos going to be put on? Oh, not for a long time. Uh, it was going to be a year, and it's been a year now since we did the rebuild, but, you know, the world changed in the last several months, so I, I, I can't. Um, I need to get electricity for other people here on the property before I get a turbo for me to play with on my bus. We need a lot on the property before the turbo goes on the bus. Yeah. Do you ever find a school bus for people like you did for your daughter? That's not my daughter. Um, I would claim her as my daughter, but she's not my daughter. <laughs> uh, that's Sean, one of our clients, uh, his daughter. And I don't really get too involved in the school buses, um, but he's a good guy to reach out to and uh, that, that auction down there where they where they do that that Lee County Florida or whatever those prices that he was buying those buses for 500 600 dollars a piece um, I thought those were pretty good deals Mally's bus is converted now she's been living in it right as far as I know yeah yeah um, it looks nice I saw some pictures of it um, but yeah I, I don't really I don't I don't know a whole lot about that version of bus. So far, no mosquitoes tonight, by the way. Uh, that was the next question. This, How is the mosquito control working? Oh, wow. I'm going to... This is the first night that we've really been out here after sunset, and the sun is officially set here. I don't see it even anywhere. So, um, yeah, no mosquitoes buzzing around us. So, oh, something just hit me in the head, but I think it was a fly. So, that's why I just looked down. Probably jinxed myself. <laughs> no mosquitoes. <laughs> no mosquitoes. If you had a 12 v 71, what could you estimate your mileage would be? Um, well, it depends on what it's in. So if it's in like my bus, if that's what you're asking, I don't think it would be that much different depending on how you drive it. So eight miles per gallon, maybe instead of 10, um, like a big, a bigger bus, like an, an MC six, I think they get like seven, six and seven. How is your mom? She's doing well. Where's the pink bunny? 
Um, Retired for the summer? Yeah, the pink bunny. It, well, today, not, it's nice and cool tonight. I would wear it tonight. But I, I'm not wearing it tonight, but I would <laughs> wear it tonight. Did you run a water line all the way to Lenny? We did. Uh, not the right way. So we just ran a uh, PEX line above ground. Not supposed to do that. Um, but it's through the shade. I'm not Mostly. worried about it. And it's a half inch PEX line. Um, so it's not a whole lot of water pressure by the time it gets over here. But it's just having running water available at the bus is still a huge life improvement. What's your opinion about the GMC RTS 2 from 78 to 85? Nice bus. Um, it doesn't really have the look of the vintage stuff, but it's got all the other stuff that you want it to have. Um, so they're nice. It's a, it's a good uh, modern looking bus though. If you like that kind of style, I do. I like it. I just, I prefer the metal of the vintage stuff better. Um, but there's a lot of uh, people that pull the engines and transmissions out of those to swap them into other GM buses. What's your hourly rate? If you're working with me, it's $90 an hour. Mm -hmm. And if I'm by myself, it's 115. $115. Thank you. Do you do conversions? No. Did my own, but not, not for hire. Uh, I am not a skilled carpenter. Um, you do not want me to, uh, to do that. But uh, all the, the other stuff, you know, getting the mechanicals of the bus. That's my thing. I think I just saw, was that a super sticker though? Mm -mm. From Harold. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. What size socket is needed to remove the inner bud stud on a 4104? Uh, what is that, 13 16 square? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, I think it's thir 13 16 Where can I find Patreon sign up? Um, what is the link to that? It's patreon.com slash bus grease monkey, I think. But be. it might be bus dash grease dash monkey or something like it might be something dumb like that. Um, I can't click off to. I think if you click on the on our YouTube channel, click the about, and in the about, I think there's a link to the Patreon right there. I'm pretty sure it's there. Oh my gosh. The dogs. <laughs> Uh, Michael, love it. Kelly, uh, gave a nice super chat and Kelly Grow Garden Garrow. Um, her garden is growing really good. Actually, I reached out to some friends here in the area to see if they want some some of our plants because we need to thin things down just a little bit in the garden. Because um, like every seed that we planted actually grew, so we need to kind of space some things out a little bit in there. Uh, so we got some tomato plants and some different things that we're going to cucumbers and stuff that we'd like to try to give to somebody that are growing really really well that I think they would transplant good so thank thank you Michael for that and then uh Eric for whatever thank thank you Eric um thank you for being a supporter of the channel too appreciate that how's Lenny Lenny's good can I want to see Lenny Let's see if I can do this. You gonna duck, Kelly? Are you all right? <laughs> oh. You still get me. Sorry. There's Lenny. God, he's handsome. <laughs> Sorry. Have you considered using citronella plants for mosquitoes? No. Um, up until now, I mean, we, we did the fogging and stuff like that too, but that really didn't make any difference on the mosquitoes because that one night we were out here, as soon as the sun set, they were out. Um, it's a cooler night tonight, so that I don't want to say that that stuff's working perfectly because maybe the mosquitoes don't come out when it's cooler like this. I don't know. Um, but at this time, a week ago, we were really inundated by mosquitoes and right now since we've hung up those uh tube things 
um, yeah, there's none bothering me. Nothing, nothing actually flying around right now. Mm -mm. Not even whatever those other little... Other than that fly. Yeah. How long is the life expectancy of the Battleborn battery? There's a 10 year warranty on them. Um, I have a video that I'm working on. I just, maybe I'll get it done this weekend. I've, I've shot quite a bit of footage for it to go over our whole solar, everything that we have with solar and how our bus works and uh, on the house side of the electrical things. And a big part of that is gonna be about talking about the Battleborn batteries and how awesome they are. Um, you know, why we have them and, and, but yeah, that 10 year warranty on them is incredible. Uh, you know, I had really thought hard about doing what Juan has, where he's built his own battery bank. And I've, you know, watched videos on YouTube of other people that have done that too. Uh, some using the Nissan Leaf, some using Tesla, some using just uh, the regular uh, lithium cells, buying them used out of, you know, modems and all kinds of stuff, or you know, not cell phones, but uh, laptop computers and things like that too. But uh, I just don't really trust that stuff and knowing that that's like all right underneath of us at night with fire hazards and all that kind of thing i just you know what battleborn has done all the thinking their, their bms is a really good bms that's on there the batteries do everything that you would want them to do they're super safe and that 10-year warranty um you know if i buy a crash car i don't know what happened to something flew by but that wasn't a, it was a spider um Spiders don't really fly, but that thing was going by. Um, don't really fly. They don't fly at all. <laughs> okay, you missed a super chat, so. Oh, shoot. Sorry. Um, anyways, back to the Battleborn real quick. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> Ten-year warranty. Ten-year warranty. <laughs> so they're going to be at least 10 years. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But they've been flawless. Uh, Robert Davis use where it's needed um thank thank you i uh i have quite a long list of things and i need to do a video of this because i did this whole huge list uh, maybe six or eight months ago of improvements i wanted to do to the bus and i set a budget to them like i wanted to do you know i want to get it repainted and i want to do i wanted to put some solar panels on top of it and uh, i wanted new house batteries and i and i had all this things listed out that I was going to do to the bus, you know, turbo, um, and the approximate cost of what I thought it was going to cost for it. And it's not even close. <laughs> like I had, I don't remember what it was. It was, it was a really high number, $70,000. I don't remember what it was. Um, I have to go back and add it up, but that's what I had kind of figured it was going to cost when I did all this stuff to my bus. Uh, and you got to think, you know, if I, I've already got I don't even want to put a number out there. We've got more than that in it already. You think? Uh, I know. What? Okay. I was I was going to say $50,000, but she's probably right. Um, especially if I even start thinking about <laughs> stuff that's been done recently. Um, and and the bus in, in all reality, it, if, if it wasn't my bus and this bus was for sale on the market right now, it, it might be a $25,000 bus. Uh, that would be a really good day. Uh, which I would never sell it for that, so don't even ask. We're it's not, it's, it's it not for sale. I, well, we, we, we turned out, you know, we didn't turn it down. We had the discussion. If somebody offered us $100,000 for the bus, would we sell it? And the answer is absolutely no. So it's worth more to that to us than what it is. So, but to anybody else, it's not going to be worth that kind of money. So why would you put, and and let's say it has a $25,000 value right now. If we put another seventy dollars into it, it's still going to be worth $25,000. So that is like the worst investment you could ever make on a vehicle. But it would be our home and be more comfortable, easier to use and things like that. So um, it pretty much has been our home the last three years. So, but some things I've come way under budget. Like, like when I wanted to put some solar on the roof, I wanted to add a thousand watts of solar. And now we've got 3,270 up there. So like some things I didn't really, you know, I, I took it to a whole nother extreme of what I was going to do. Um, I, the panels are, were much cheaper than what you They budgeted. were, they were, yeah. Um, so happy. I don't know where this all went from, but I'll shut up. When did they ever put a fully synchro mesh transmission in buses? Not any, none of the shit that I work on has that. So I, I'm not aware of any <laughs> buses that have that. So all the old stuff does not have it. How many people we got watching this? Almost 600 people. Dang, I think 
Does Lenny have AC? Where have you been? <laughs> yeah, well, he doesn't have like, like, well, he had factory air conditioning in 1947 when he was manufactured. All the Silversides did. That was a huge uh, selling point for them that nobody had even had air conditioning in their homes or anything like that, or any of their cars had air conditioning. But you could ride a Greyhound bus in air conditioning. That's unbelievable. Uh, 1947. And, uh, well, the pre-war models had it too, uh, made by Carrier Company. Um, huge unit, had a small pony motor that ran it, but that's not what you were asking. Um, but we have the mini split. So we, we used to have two rooftop airs. We removed the one rooftop air, got the mini split. Um, loved it, it's so much better than a rooftop air ever was. A lot less power consumption and more cooling capability, even though the BTU rating is less. So I don't understand why, but it just works better. It's quieter, a lot less energy. It was so good that we actually removed the second rooftop air a couple weeks ago. Uh, so now all we have is the one mini split 12K unit and on, you know, 95 degree days and really high humidity, it's extremely comfortable in the entire bus. So yes, we have air conditioning. It's a form of a mini split. Uh, it will not work very good driving down the road at 70 miles an hour, uh, just because the air infiltration in the bus is a little bit too much on a really hot day. I haven't tried it, but I know it won't because the two rooftop airs wouldn't do it. Someone's asking why I'm ignoring them. They don't have bigger caps. Uh, if you asked a question, then I should have read it. Yeah, just ask it again. As long as you did it all in capital letters, then she would read it. But there's a lot of people who put in capital letters that's not questions oh, either. Oh, yeah, so when, pe when people it. reply to somebody else, they're talking to somebody else in the chat thing, and you do it all in capitals, that really throws her off. So don't just use the capital letters only if you're asking us a question. That really makes it easier for us to identify the questions. Because some people are just typing in all yeah. caps just because. Yeah, don't, don't type in all caps unless you're asking a question, please. You don't realize how hard it is on our end to keep up with it. You might be looking at it on your computer or something like that where you're seeing it. We're on our phone and we see like three at a time on there is all we see. No, and I, then see, we got... I see a little more than that. But oh, after you're on some... vertical. Yeah. After, after so long, it, it like shoots me to the end and I have to scroll back. It's hard. Um, do you have a smoke or carbon monoxide alarm in your bus? Yes, both. Two, two separate ones. Although my carbon monoxide alarm i need to probably move it to a different location but i'm not nearly as worried about it now because we don't have a generator on board anymore so but that doesn't mean that somebody's not going to pull up next to me at a truck stop with a generator and kill us so i'm not going to get rid of it but <coughs> not as worried about it do they still use two-stroke diesel engines in anything now Uh, maybe some NATO vehicles or something. I don't, I don't know. There might be some military application, but not, nothing in com private or commercial use like that that I'm aware of, no. Did the Silversides have a restroom in them when they were in service? I don't know the answer to that question. I've never seen one in any of the, even the ones that are restored. So I don't know if, even know if that was an option back then. I, I don't know. It would, it would make me think that yes, but I, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen one in one. Uh, did the pony run the condenser fan as well as the compressor and why was a pony used? because they didn't want to take the horsepower from the engine. It was a huge compressor. And that's all it did was the compressor. Um, every, every, the, did you catch the lightning? Bug? It's right there. Oh, the, the fan uh, and everything is run off the blower motors. What kind of range do you get on a full tank? I try not to push more than like 700 miles. Um, your little solar lights just turned on. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we, I could go further, but it, it, I've run out of fuel. Uh, the fuel pickup, to, if I'm climbing a hill, um, no, if I'm going down a hill, it runs out. One time I stopped at a stoplight that was on a pretty good downgrade downhill and it ran out of fuel. Uh, and I still had like 30 gallons in the tank. So it was a little bit to the side and down. Brandon, Gosh, 
screen it says show them the AC unit in Tyler's bus so they can see how big it is. You can flip it around and go walk down there if you want before you lose light. I don't know if it'll show up at all, but um, yeah, you go back, you can refer to Tyler's video of his bus uh, when we got his bus because, yeah, his, his whole unit is still in that bus. Everything for that air conditioning is still there. Did you have to cut the brake rod to get proper alignment? Oh, yeah, yeah, that was that was the longest thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> um, it I don't know how that happened. I don't know how somebody did that. Um, because clearly they had the ability to cut it because the end of it, they looked like they cut it with a torch. So when it was in the clevis, they cut it off in the clevis with a torch. Like who does that? Um, but that just means, I mean, clearly they had the ability to cut it when they put it on the geometry, everything about brakes is 90 degrees. It's just a stronger application and to have that rod so long and be way out of alignment where it, made it want to bend um that was just crazy I, I thought maybe it was like a road emergency roadside repair or something but i mean you take the old one off you measure the length of it and if you put the new one on at the same length you're not going to screw that up uh, and then just confirm that it's going to be about 90 degrees to do it anyways uh, mini split AC. How is the vibration from the outside unit being mounted in the side box? Zero. The it is ten percent of noise and vibration of what the rooftop air would have made. You think ten percent? I think that's a high number. You think ten percent's high? <laughs> it's crazy. You don't even hear you, you don't, it. You don't hear it at all. I I can be standing five feet from the bus outside and you don't hear the air running. The rooftop air, I could have been 50 feet away and been like, turn that thing off, it's annoying. Pad, yeah, they were loud, um, which I kind of liked in certain, like when we wanted to sleep at night or at a truck stop, if I turned that air conditioning fan on at night um, or several truck stops, we actually, once we had the Battleborn batteries, we could run that air, that rooftop air all night long. That was really sweet because it blocks out now, all the noise of the trucks coming and going. But yeah, now we just run our Dyson fan. No, yeah, we have a Dyson fan, which isn't nearly as noisy either. I need to get probably another fan just for more circulation from the front to the back. Um, but I'm completely happy. What's your thoughts on automatic slack adjusters? Um, I don't really have thoughts on them. I don't put much time thinking into them. Uh, it would be a pain in the butt to change them. I don't know that I trust them 100%. You still have to pay attention to what's going on. I, I like manual slacks that you got to get in there and, and do yourself because it's keeping you familiar with your equipment. You're seeing what's going on. Uh, automatic slack, I think that you're a lot more prone to be lazy about paying attention to your systems. Um, but hindsight, you got to get under there and do the work. You can't just ignore it or you're not going to have breaks. So. It's starting to get really dark out. Mm -hmm. Potential name for your property, Songbirds and Silverside Shady Acres Homestead. That's a little bit wordy. Too long for me. <laughs> a little bit wordy, but I like it, I mean, but no. That's too long. <laughs> it needs to be like two words. <laughs> I, the one you came up with though was longer and I like it. Oh. <laughs> Nothing is just, I'm just waiting for the perfect thing to come to mind, I think. What's the main difference? I'm going to flip the camera around just so we can watch Lenny in the sunset here. Let's see if this works. So you don't have to look at my big dumb face either. Look at Lenny. He's got that little little light on the front of him. It's not very bright. It's not very bright, but it's a little solar light. What's the main difference when you adjust DD3 brakes versus spring brakes? No, nothing, nothing in the adjustment that's different. Um, yeah, if, if you want to get familiar with, I mean, there's probably plenty of websites that explain how DD3s work and, and the difference. They're, they are not like a regular traditional spring brake. There's the easiest way to identify them when you don't know what you have is if there's three big air hoses that run to each can instead of two. Like you normally just have uh, your service brake and then the supply uh, parking brake side. Have you tried neem oil on the ticks? What oil? Neem, N-E-E-M? No, I never even heard of that. I haven't been bitten by one. I haven't been bitten by one yet, have I? No, I've had three. Yeah, I've not been bitten by one yet. 
Have you ever used liquid wrench on a stuck bolt? I've used liquid everything that they say works on stuck bolts. So yes, I've used liquid wrench. They have multiple forms of it that I've tried. Uh, Croil is my favorite that I love, um, but you always have to say a prayer no matter what kind you use, so. How about Grease Monkey Mountain? It's just not me. I don't think I want anything to do with bus Grease Monkey to the property. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. I don't, it, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything for me, that, that, that name. It, it doesn't describe the feeling that I get when I'm here. Or, <laughs> I'll shut up. <laughs> you won't stop if you don't shut up now. How does it feel being able to work on buses again? It feels good. I don't like the dirty hands. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> um, no, it feels really good. And I'm excited to have another bus here tomorrow. That, that should be real fun. It was fun working with Mark. I, I had a really good time with him. Someone says Greaseland instead of Graceland. I like that. No. No, Kelly says no. Well... I didn't mean yeah, I, I yes. didn't mean I like it like that's what it's gonna be. I just meant I don't it's, it's, I don't hate it. How's that? No, it's it's a cute name, but I want something different. Okay, Lenny is a handsome boy over there, right? If you think Lenny is handsome, give a thumbs up to the video. <laughs> that was David. He's probably back home. Um, you can call him back. I'll have to call him back in just a little bit. Or Mark. What did I say, David? Said David. Yeah, but that's not his. That's his caller ID is a different name or something. Um, how many miles are on Lenny? Millions. Uh, two, two, two to four. I, I would have always thought it was around two million, but Joe really thought that that governor and stuff probably had about four million miles worth of wear on that thing. Someone wants to know why the property needs a name. It doesn't. Yeah, that's it's. it's I have a lot of other things to worry about other than the name of the property. But it would be cute and fun to have one. Have you ever tried freeze and release on stuck bolts? No. I've tried heat and melt it out. I better get going. We better finish up. Did you have a whole bunch more questions or no? I'm just getting, uh, there was a bunch of people saying different names for the property. This one says, how about home? Yes. Yeah, I home. like, that's a good name. Um, Zeus, Jonathan from New Jersey says, Lenny is super handsome. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> he is a good looking old boy. Uh, I'm going to finish up here just because Mark was just trying to call me and I, I, I he should have been home by now. Um, so I just want to make sure that he got back okay. Um, and it's getting awful dark. And it's getting really dark out here. So we're going to head in for the night. And then uh, I got a, the bus is coming at 10 in the morning tomorrow. Um, I could maybe do a live when he gets here. We'll see. Yeah. And maybe he'll do a tour of his bus and stuff too. So I know he's a, he's a musician, so he's been really... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, anxious to get back on the road and be able to start, you know, performing and stuff like that too. So, but we'll see what he wants to do. Uh, but we're going to let you guys go. Thank you so much for watching us and supporting us and uh, subscribing to the channel. And we really appreciate it. And uh, like I said, maybe, maybe tomorrow morning at 10 central is when he's going to be here. If I get a chance, uh, maybe I'll do a live when he's pulling in. We'll see. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night.